Elizabeth Gaskell's work Wives and Daughters, an everyday story was initially published as a serial from 1864 to 1866. Mrs. Gaskell left it unfinished when she passed away abruptly in 1865, and Frederick Greenwood finished it. Young Molly Gibson is being nurtured by her widowed father, Mr. Gibson, the town's physician. During a visit to the Lord and Lady Cumnor's local aristocratic great house, Molly gets lost in the estate's grounds and passes out beneath a tree. Molly is located and sent to bed in Mrs. Kirkpatrick's chamber by Lady Cuxhaven, one of the house's daughters, and Mrs. Kirkpatrick, a previous governess to the Cumnor kids. Mrs. Kirkpatrick is referred to by her family as Claire, the name used for her when she was a governess. Molly is reassured by Claire, who gives the impression of being a lovely person, that she would wake her up when it is time for the entourage to go. She neglects to accomplish this, leaving Molly trapped in the estate. The idea of having to spend the night there upsets her. She is relieved to see her father pick her up finally. After seven years, Molly has developed into a beautiful, kind, and straightforward young lady. Mr. Cox, one of Mr. Gibson's apprentices, is found to have developed feelings for Molly without her knowledge. In order to safeguard Molly, her father arranges for her to remain with the landed gentry Hamleys of Hamley Hall, whose ancestors are supposed to have lived there during the Heptarchy but whose circumstances have since changed. Molly develops a strong bond with Mrs. Hamley, who treats her almost like a daughter. Roger, the youngest of the Hamley boys, also becomes friends with Molly. Molly is aware that the sons of Squire Hamley would not consider her to be a good match since she is the daughter of a working man. Osborne, the older son, was anticipated to stand out at Cambridge and find love with a desirable bride since he is more attractive, intelligent, and trendy than his brother. But his performance at the university disappoints, hurting his parents' feelings. Molly leaves home, and Mr. Gibson makes the decision to get remarried. He feels that getting married would increase his level of comfort at home and provide Molly with a mother figure to protect her from influences like Mr. Cox's. He remembers Mrs. Kirkpatrick's seeming generosity to Molly many years ago and finds her to be perfectly suited to his needs. Molly recognizes her from their last meeting and doesn't much like her. She does her best to get along with her socially aspirational and egotistical new stepmother for the sake of her father. The family is not always cheerful, but Molly does have an ally in Cynthia, her new stepsister, who is around Molly's age. The two girls are a study in contrasts. Molly is innocent and a little awkward, while Cynthia is far more worldly and rebellious. Since Cynthia had her education in France, it eventually becomes clear that she and her mother are hiding something from the great house's land agent, Mr. Preston, who is thought to be a gambler and a rogue. As Molly continues to visit Hamley Hall, she unintentionally learns a significant secret. Osborne Hamley has secretly married Aimé, a French Roman Catholic former nursery maid, for love. Osborne is certain that his father will never accept Aimé as his daughter-in-law. Osborne's issues are made worse by the fact that his failure at Cambridge seems to have worsened his mother's condition and increased the distance between him and his father, which is made worse by the huge debts Osborne accrued to support his hidden wife. When Mrs. Hamley passes away, the rift between the squire and his oldest son seems to be unbridgeable. Roger, the younger son, keeps pushing himself academically and eventually earns the honours and accolades that his brother was anticipated to get. Mrs. Gibson makes an unsuccessful attempt to marry Cynthia and Osborne because she wants to marry her daughter off to a member of the landed nobility. Roger has always impressed Molly with his common sense and honourable nature, and she quickly develops a crush on him. Sadly for her, Roger develops feelings for Cynthia, and when Mrs. Gibson learns that Osborne could be terminally sick, increasing Roger's prospects of inheriting the Hamley fortune, 
she starts advocating the couple's marriage. Cynthia agrees when Roger asks for her hand just before he embarks on a two-year research mission to Africa, but she is adamant that their engagement remain a secret until Roger returns. Molly is devastated and juggles her grief with her knowing that Cynthia doesn't care much for Roger. Cynthia tells Molly that when she was just 15 years old, and Mr. Preston had borrowed her 20 pounds, she had made a secret pledge to marry him. Although she quickly came to regret her choice, Mr. Preston remains fixated on her and threatens to reveal to Roger the letters she sent as proof of her word. As a result of Molly's intervention on Cynthia's behalf, the engagement is called off, and the letters are returned. Nevertheless, because of her contact with Preston, slanderous rumors about her love involvement with him spread. This sets up an emotional situation when Dr. Gibson and Mrs. Gibson learn of Cynthia's relationship with Mr. Preston. After breaking off her engagement to Roger, Cynthia accepts and marries Mr. Henderson, a businessman she met in London, despite receiving criticism and abuse for her inconsistency. Only when Molly drives around town with Lady Harriet Cumner, who is aware of how erratic public opinion can be and wants to support Molly, is Molly's reputation restored. Osborne wants Molly to remember his wife and kid when he passes away since he is dying and believes it is imminent. Shortly later, Osborne passes away, and Molly tells the distraught squire Hamley about his wife and child. After learning that her husband is unwell, Osborne's widow Amy travels to Hamley Hall with their little boy, who is named Roger but is affectionately referred to as Little Osborne in honour of his father, who is now the Hamley estate heir. In the meanwhile, Roger has hurried home to be with his father, and because of his kindness and excellent judgement, the squire is able to perceive the potential happiness in this new family, particularly the grandson. After overcoming his prejudice towards Amy's Catholicism, the squire proposes that they both move in with him. Roger starts to understand that his love for Molly goes beyond what a brother would feel for a sister as he integrates himself into the local scientific community. He is helped by Lady Harriet's thoughtful intervention, who has always appreciated Molly's value and attractions, and finds himself hurt at the idea of Molly being with anybody else. Even yet, he holds back his emotions since he feels undeserving of her love after having wasted his heart on the feckless Cynthia. He confides his sentiments to Mr. Gibson before leaving for Africa, and Mr. Gibson wholeheartedly approves of the relationship. However, the necessity to segregate after a scarlet fever scare prevents Roger from speaking to Molly before he departs. Gaskell's story ends here since she passed away, leaving the book incomplete. She had revealed to a friend that she wanted Roger to come back and give Molly a dried flower as a token of his continuing love, which Molly had given to him before he left. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.